Hello, and thank you for joining us tonight for an information session on the Masters of Science in Management degree program at Walsh College. My name is Dr. Bill Bateman, and I'm the chair of the management department and also a professor of management and finance at Walsh College. I'm going to be spending some time today talking about how to choose the right college to study management. Following this presentation, I'll join you live along with a representative from the admissions department at Walsh College so that we can answer any questions that you might have. So choosing the right school to study management can be difficult. Um, if you look at a Google search for Masters of Management as your search term, you're going to get thousands of responses. And the problem then becomes, how do you sift through these responses to find a good management uh, program at the graduate level? You know, how do you sift through the endless ads on social media, on TV, on radio, and podcast? There are some simple questions that you can ask when sifting through this information to help you decide on your investment in a Master's of Management degree. One of the things that you can consider is the credibility of the program or school that you're considering. The first question you should ask is, is the school accredited? Now there's a couple different types of accreditation that I want to explain. The first are regional accreditations. And for Walsh, uh, being that we're located in Troy, Michigan, we are part of the Higher Learning Commission a, a regional accreditation uh, system. This was previously known as the North Central. There are other regional accreditation systems that are based on their location of the schools, and those include the Middle States, the New England Commission, the Northwest Commission, and the Southern Association of Colleges. The regional accreditation is a must. If you are considering a school that does not have one of these regional accreditations, I would recommend looking for a different school. These accreditations are given at the institution level for the entire institution. Now, going on from that, there are also specialty accreditations that accredit just certain areas of an institution. Now, because Walsh is a business school, all of our business programs are also accredited by the Accreditation Council for Business Schools and Programs, also known as ACBSP. Recently, we had visits from both the Accreditation or ACBSP and from the Higher Learning Commission to renew our accreditations that were uh, scheduled to expire. Uh, both visits have been completed. All the reports have been filed. Happy to say that ACBSP has already informed us that we have passed the accreditation process and are accredited for another 10 years. Our Higher Learning Commission visit was just recently and we're waiting to hear official word, but all signs are that we will certainly be accredited for another 10 years by the Higher Learning Commission. There are other business school specialty accreditations, and the biggest and maybe the uh, best known is the Association to Advance Collegiate Schools of Business, known as AACSB or Big A. Now, Walsh does not have this accreditation, and there's a reason for it. This accreditation really focuses more on publication of faculty and uh, what they're doing in terms of research. It's really not an appropriate uh, accreditation for a school like Walsh, where although our professors are involved in academic research, that is not the focus of Walsh. We are a school where you come to learn and where instructors teach. There's also another accreditation, which is called the International Accreditation Council for Business Education which accredits 
business schools across the world. Another thing that you could look at are what are the faculty's credentials? And you can look at their academic record, their industry experience, and maybe the research or publications that they've been involved in. Now, the academic record would include faculty's teaching experience along with their uh, where they receive their degrees and which degrees they have. For example, at Walsh, all professors that are teaching in the Masters of Science and Management program are doctorally qualified, meaning they have a doctorate degree and a requisite amount of study in the area of management. Now, what's unique to Walsh is not only are our faculty highly credentialed academically, but they're also highly credentialed due to their in the industry experience. For example, I spent 25 years in the banking and commercial finance uh, business or industry. And after I had had a very successful career, I moved into higher education. You can also uh, learn about a faculty's credentials by seeing what kind of research and what kind of publications they may have been involved with. And then another thing that can add to a institution's credibility are their admission standards or admission requirements. Some require very high GPAs from an undergraduate program, or they might require experience in industry before starting a, a master's in management or they may require test scores such as a GRE or a GMAT. We'll hear later from the admissions representative what the actual admissions requirements are here at Walsh. The next question you might wanna ask about a program is, is it convenient? First, you wanna know what type of facilities do they have? Is there a physical campus? And if so, is it in a convenient location that you can access easily from home or work? Or is it just an online campus where there is no physical location and all classes would be completed in a virtual environment? Or is it a combination of the two where there are uh, classes available on a physical campus, as well as classes available online. Now, Walsh has a physical campus located on Livernoy near Big Beaver in Troy, Michigan. And you can complete your program on campus. Or you can complete your program online so that you would never have to go to campus. And then you could do a combination of doing both physical camp, being on the physical campus as well as being online. Now, I think there's an advantage to an institution that has both the online and physical campus, brick and mortar, as we like to call it. When there's a physical campus, you have somewhere that you know you can go to to get your problems solved or your issues dealt with, even if you're in a totally online campus. Also with a physical campus, it really uh, demonstrates some type of sustainability with an investment in buildings and real estate and all the things that come around with having a physical campus. The chances are that they will be around for a while due to the physical nature, as opposed to an online school where the cost or uh, opportunities to uh, cease operations would be much easier. You also want to look at the delivery methods for a online school in particular. Now, as you know, when you go to the physical campus, you'll have a class that's on say a Monday night from six to nine, and you'll be expected to show up, meet with other students and the instructor at the same time on campus. So that's known as synchronous. However, you can also have an online uh, program or online classes that can be uh, synchronous in nature, meaning uh, 
the, the, the class meets at Monday night at, from six to nine, but instead of going to a classroom on campus, you turn on your computer and log into the classroom site. And you'll be able to see and talk with and uh, interact with the other students and your instructor. Now, the opposite, of the, the opposite of this is asynchronous. And this is where the delivery method is totally online, but you're able to take your lessons at your convenience, meaning the lectures and activities will be online. There'll be taped activities, there'll be, vi or there'll be taped lectures, there'll be videos, there'll be other types of uh, delivery methods, but you can do this entirely on your time. Now, understand that even an asynchronous class that's uh, online for the most part may have synchronous activities from time to time for things like group projects, but you could find that in any type of delivery. And the third type is a hybrid where you can do synchronous activities for part of the class and then asynchronous activities for the other part of the class. You might also want to know about the time commitment. And the time commitment can either be uh, thought of in terms of how many hours per week am I going to have to put into this while I'm, while I'm going to school, while I'm doing this degree? Or the other question could be, if I started today, when could I expect to finish the degree? So if you look at this idea of convenience, again, the delivery methods at Walsh, we do all three, synchronous, asynchronous, and hybrid. We have a physical campus and we have an online campus. We've been doing online education much, uh, much longer than most people, at least for 20 years now. And then the time commitment, you figure all of our classes are three credit hours. So the standard is that if you spend three hours in the class itself, expect to spend at least another nine hours outside of class up to nine hours outside of class. Anyway, um, you figure per credit hour, three hours, one hour in class, three hours outside. So that's kind of the standard calculation that we, we uh, uh, ask students to prepare for. Now, the total time to complete the Masters of Science and Management at Walsh is anywhere from two to three years. The classes are scheduled such that you could, by doubling up with classes, finish a degree program, in two years. And remember that Walsh classes are offered in 12-week terms and they start fall, winter, spring, and summer. The degree programs are 30 credit hours or 10 courses. So you can see how by doubling up, you could even get done in less than 10 years. Personally, I like to tell students to relax, enjoy the ride. This is a journey. And, uh, you know, spread it out a little bit. But there are students that for various reasons want to get it done quicker and we're going to support them in that effort and work with them to make sure that can happen. The next thing that you might want to consider is, is the program current? Are the courses fresh and do they include up-to-date resources? Or are we studying the same old typical management theories that are, in some cases, 100 years old. What I can tell you about Walsh is that all of the courses in the core curriculum, which we'll review in a few slides, have been updated or written brand new in the last year. So the courses at Walsh are very fresh, very relevant. You're going to take something that you learn in class on Monday night and be able to apply it to your job and your situation at work on Tuesday morning. That's how relevant these courses are. And when we take a detailed look at some of the courses, you'll understand why I can say that. Another question you might wanna ask is, are instructors current with real world experience? Are they always been in academics, haven't been in the outside world for a while, or are they active in the corporate community? Now at Walsh, we require all of our instructors to have had real world experience, and most of them are still working today. So they are aware of the uh, opportunities and the, uh, the issues and the, the challenges 
that might uh, that a, that a businessman or a woman might face today. Uh, for instance, with the COVID pandemic that we have been experiencing, our instructors were also managers in the real world dealing with that and able to offer advice and counsel to students who were also dealing with that in their workplace. You want to know, are the subjects that they're teaching, are they relevant to your position at work and to your experience level? Again, are they teaching theories from 150 and 25 years ago, or are they teaching uh, things that are relevant and applicable to business people today? At Walsh College, we have some very unique classes that simply aren't offered in other management programs. One of them is a full semester on design thinking, which will help a manager become more creative and innovative in their job. And the last question you wanna ask is the content engaging. Am I gonna to have to read 500 page dense textbooks take a test, regurgitate it, and learn that way? Or am I gonna be involved in activities like we do at Walsh that are engaging and assess your performance and your growth through application, simulation, and self-reflection? You'll also want to inquire about whether or not the program is career focused. So you want to get, ask about what are the program's placement rates after graduation? Is the school or college going to try to help you in finding a job? What kind of job will you get or will you even get a job? And then what kind of salary can you expect? And schools now, and you should look for this, are advertising or publicizing their return on investment, where they take average salaries and match it up against the tuition fees and total cost of attendance for a master's program. So at Walsh College, our graduates, almost 100% are working upon graduation. Now, because of the type of school that we are, many are coming in with, with a, a, a position or working already. But what we find is that students aren't having to wait until they graduate to get that next job or that next promotion, but that's happening for them while they're in the program itself. If you don't have a job or you're looking for a new one, Walsh also has a career services department that will provide you with much assistance in your job search. As a matter of fact, this service offered by career services department is available to alumni of Walsh College for their entire lifetime. The types of jobs that you can expect to get with a master's in management are very, very broad and felt flexible because management covers so many different organizations, profit and nonprofit, public and private. Just about any kind of organization you, that you can think of requires good professional managers that are well-trained. And that's what you'll get from a management or a master's of science and management at Walsh College. But you're probably really wondering, how much money am I going to make? Well, according to payscale.com, those individuals with master's in management or a master's of science in management tend to be employed as directors in their organization, say, director of HR, director of operations, director of sales. And the average salary for a director position is about $95,000. Now, of course, there's a wide range around that average, but the average, according to payscale.com, is right around $95,000. So at some point, you're gonna to wanna to stop to consider the curriculum. You're gonna to wanna to know what does the program actually teach? What are you studying? You're gonna to wanna to ask if the course of study is clear and you have a plan of completion. You're gonna to wanna to know how you'll be ex uh, uh, assessed on your performance. What instructional methods are gonna be used and is uh, the curriculum current and relevant as we've already talked about. 
So at Walsh, you're going to be studying actually management in a management program. And you'll, at the beginning, sit down with your advisor and plan a course of study and, and plot out your entire program. Now, during, during the program, there are many different ways to be assessed. It's not a lot of exams. As a matter of fact, we're trying right now to make the MSM program, the Masters of Science and Management, what we'll eventually call an exam-free zone. So how are you going to be accept, uh, assessed on your performance? Through discussion, self-reflection, application, and simulation. And the instructional methods that will be used are not just lectures, but there'll be a lot of group work. There'll be a lot of individual work. As I said, there'll be simulations that you'll be involved in and other things other than just a lecture and test environment. The core curriculum for the Masters of Science and Management at Walsh consists of seven classes in management. And uh, then we'll see in a moment, there'll be an additional three courses that will um, make up your total 30 hour program. So one of the first classes that you may decide to start with is, with is organizational behavior and leadership. This is a unique class in that you'll study the theories of leadership and then immediately apply them by doing a self-reflected assessment of your strengths and weaknesses within that particular leadership theory. So at the end of the course, you'll have a pretty good profile of who you are as a leader and what you need to do to improve and what you need to do to exploit your strengths. Another new class that we believe we are at Walsh, the only school in Michigan teaching this at the master's level, although there are schools that are offering it a week or so of design thinking, but that is design thinking. And this is a class where you will learn design thinking by doing design thinking. You'll be doing a group project and going through a six step design thinking process to come up with an innovative and creative solution to a problem. Another course we have is evidence-based decision-making. This is important for managers as data, data, data is the word of the day and will help you take data that's been prepared for you and base your decisions on that data. There's also a class in uh, communication strategies for managers. And then the management capstone is one of the last classes you'll take. And you'll study all of the strategic management topics and theories, as well as participate in a simulation where you, where you will run your own company in a virtual world. There's also a managing firm resources co uh, course and here, you will not be asked to calculate a lot or work through large, uh, sophisticated financial formulas. But as a manager, you'll be given financial data. And this class will help you to interpret and manage your resources in a firm through the analysis and understanding of this financial data. And then one final class in the core curriculum is leading organizational change. And you'll be studying Cotter's six step uh, process for change in an organization. Now you're gonna to wanna to ask, well, I have choices in a program. Most masters of science and management programs, you study management and it's pretty well locked into a specific area of study. Um, you want to know, is there flexibility in scheduling? Is there a sequence to the flexibility? Are there a lot of prerequisites? You know, when can you register? And, and then maybe even talk about what other programs are offered. So when we look at concentrations or our program, there are four concentrations that you will choose from to complete in addition to the core courses. That being the human resources management, small business management or entrepreneurship, strategic leadership. And then if you wanna study 
management, but you don't necessarily want to concentrate in one of these three tracks. You can kind of create your own track and get a concentration in general management by picking three courses from any of these listed on this page. Now, one of the things that you're going to want to consider, and it was a question on the last slide, was what other programs are offered by the school? So at Walsh, we also offer a master's of accounting, a master's of taxation, a master's in marketing, a master's in finance and economics, and then the master's of management. In addition, we offer a MBA program, a master's of business administration. And there are also opportunities to take both the MBA and the MSM as a dual degree. So we have an admissions representative here that can answer specific questions as to what the next steps would be if you're interested in learning more about Walsh's Masters of Science and Management. And then I'll be here as well to further explore the MSM with you. Thank you for your time tonight. And we're looking forward to a very robust and exciting question and answer period.